Hey guys, in this video we're going to be covering one of the functions of the image search library, wait for images search. This is just like a regular image search, except if it doesn't find the first image, it'll look for the second image, and if it doesn't find the second, the third, so on, so forth. It's cool too because if it finds a specific image, you can tell it to do something different if it found that image as opposed to a different image. In order to do this, you need to download the image search library. If you don't have that, you're gonna have to watch part one of this little tutorial series on image searching. All right, let's get started. First thing we got to do, like before, is create an x variable. We're going to set that to zero. We're going to create a y variable, set that to zero. We're also going to create a variable called wait time, set that to 1.5. And then let's also declare a variable for picture, which is going to be the picture that we're searching for. However, since we're searching for more than one picture, let's change this to pictures. We're going to put a uh, square bracket. We're going to put the number four, then we're going to put another square bracket. Now, for some reason, in order to get this to work, we're going to have to put either local or global. I'm going to leave mine on global because it means it's available through the entire program. So the images I'm going to be searching for are this number one, this number two, and this number three. So if you've never used an array before, what we're doing is we're saying that we've created a variable called pictures and we're saying that pictures has four items in it. The way that the wait for images search library works is you're going to have to make so you say pictures zero equals and now for this library the first item in the list is the number of items you're searching for so we're going to set it to three because i'm looking for three images then press Control d to duplicate and then instead of zero i'm going to say one so then the second element in pictures we're going to set this to the name of my first picture so it's 1.png just because I wanted it to be easier. If you didn't save your images to the same directory as your uh, folder or your project, you're going to have to do the entire path instead of just a picture name. I'm going to press Control D two more times to make sure this is all the way it's supposed to be. And that's looking good. So if you don't know about arrays, arrays start from zero, not one. So I said we're searching for four items. Since they start from zero, we've got the zero item which is the first one, then we've got the first, the one item, which is the second, we've got the two item, which is the third, and we've got the three item, which is the fourth. Again, the first item, zero, is the number of images you're searching for, the total number of images. Now, like in the other videos, we're gonna make another variable called result, you can call it whatever you want, equals underscore wait for images search, make sure it's a plural, Parentheses, the name of our picture, which in this case is pictures. It's the array. We're going to do comma. Then the wait time, or how long we want to wait to find the image. Then we're going to do one comma, our variable x, our variable y, zero comma zero, end parentheses, and save. This is a documentation file I created and included with the Dropbox download for the image search library. If you downloaded the image search library off of the AutoIt form or somewhere else, the link to this documentation file is in the description. So we can see we have the wait for images search, like we declared a minute ago. We have our find image, which it says right here is the array of images you're trying to locate. Set array zero to the number of images to loop through. One is the first item, array two is the second item, so on and so forth. Wait seconds is how long to, uh, seconds to try to wait and find the image. Result position. Set where the returned X and Y location is. So when it finds the image, it's going to store it right up here in X and in Y. But what will it store? Will it store the top left corner of the image, which would be if you set it to zero? Or will it store the middle of the image? In our script, we set it to one, so it's going to store the middle of the image. Like I said a minute ago, X and Y is where it finds the image. Tolerance is how off it can be from the image. So a, a simple way to kind of explain it is, let's say it found an image that was 88% like the one you're searching for. It's not 100%. If you set the tolerance to zero, it's no go, it's not good enough. If you set it to something above zero, there'd be a little leeway for it to not be on point. Uh, the highest you can go is 255. I've heard people on the auto it form say somewhere between 100 and 150 is a good number. Keep in mind, the higher you go, the longer it's going to take to search and the higher the chances are it's going to uh, produce a false positive and falsely identify something. 
As I've said in the other videos, I'm not too sure about the transparency. I think basically it's going to allow for some kind of transparent aspect to your images. So um, if I'm not mistaken, this zero right here is transparency. If you were to set that zero to the word trans black, it would allow for the image search to detect your image with some kind of black transparent background. If you were to set it to trans white, it would allow for some tr white transparent background or a hex value of the color that you're trying to use. What do I mean by that? Well, press the start button on your keyboard, click on the auto it folder and scroll down until you see auto it window information. Go to the mouse tab, grab the finder tool and hover over this as an example. You can see we get this color. This color right here is actually a hex value for the color gray. I believe if you were to set this transparency to this color, it would allow for the image search to, to detect this image with this slightly gray transparent background. All right, so we've got the explanation out of the way. We've done our image search, we've stored the result. Now we have to do something with it. With other versions of the image search, we would simply do if result equals one, then do our stuff. However, since we're searching for multiple images, if you were to do this, what you would be saying is if our result image, which is the image we found, equals one, or in other words, equals this image, then do stuff. If we set it to two, we'd be saying if result equaled this image, or three, if it equaled that image. So what we have to do, if you wanted it to say, if it equals any of the images, you would say if result is not equal to zero, or if it's greater than zero. Essentially saying if it's anything above zero, which would be all of these images, then do what we want it to do. If you want your script to do something different based on each image, I recommend probably doing a switch, or which I've uh, covered in a previous tutorial, uh, which would be an easy way of saying if the result is one, or if the result is two, or if the result is three, really easy way to do it rather than a bunch of if else's. So for this, I'm just gonna do if the result is greater than zero, then we're going to mouse move X comma Y comma, and to make you guys be able to see the mouse move on its own, I'm setting the mouse speed to 100 else. Once again, our handy dandy tooltip with a message of error. And we're gonna sleep for a second so we can see the tooltip and if. I'm gonna press F5. You can see the mouse is moving on its own to image one. Once it found image one, it exited the script. So when it finds its image, it's going to exit. I'm gonna use this adorable kitty picture to cover the first image so we can try to see if it uh, catches the second image or the third image. I'm also going to set a sleep time right here just so I can have enough time to pull up the kitty image. There we go. I'm going to press F5, covering the image 1, and the mouse is moving on its own. Ah, it's image 3. Since it went to image 3, that means it didn't properly identify image 2. So I'm going to go ahead and move this cat picture up just a bit. Let's try this one more time. And it uh, detected image 2. The reason it wasn't detecting it was if you look carefully, this has a slightly black background to it, and I think it was covering over that. As a matter of fact, that would probably be a good reason to set some kind of transparency detection. Thanks for watching, you guys. Have a good one.